was also water baptized in her church. Then she goes on to say and share with us that on the, four, on the 11th of November 2016, something unpredictable happened to her. She suffered a heart attack as a young woman at the tender age of 29 years old. The doctors had very little hope as to um, Samantha making a full recovery because she suffered a second heart attack while being on the operation table in theater. But God, I love that part, but God. The following morning, she woke up and ever since that morning, her life shifted and have never been the same. Amazing grace indeed, she says. She says, I then, I, I thank God for the privilege to serve him and the assurance to know him every day. I know now more than ever that he is real and his grace is sufficient for me. His favor is upon my life and the plans that God has for me is still coming into fulfillment. My life is not without any trials or tribulations, but she takes refuge in God. She's married, happily married, let me say it, happily married, and she has been blessed with a beautiful family. She's the mother to three angels and they are a blessing to her indeed. She ends up by saying God is faithful. Oh man, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. So Samantha, as we always do on Agape FM, on the Encounter Me, we talk about your journey. And before we rush into it, I would really like to talk to you about a little bit more about your upbringing. So share with us, Samantha. Who is Samantha? As I was sitting this morning in the bath, Yolanda was thinking, how do I start with this? Sure. Because Samantha now is a determined, mm -hmm. sound-minded, mm -hmm. challenging lady. But growing up, I used to be, I was forever behind the scenes. Sure. I was comfortable behind the sure. scenes, you know. Mm -hmm. And growing up in Ellenville, we weren't exposed to many things. Okay. So all, what if, all of everything I am now is all thanks to God. Wow. And everything that he exposed me to is all thanks to him because... Growing up, I got I got the chance and opportunity to meet different people sure. and to actually go out and see the meet different cultures, interact with different cultures. Wow. So that I think is Samantha in a nutshell. Now you can give me any challenge, and I promise you, I'm sure to fulfill that challenge. Don't tell me I can't do things. That's when you see Samantha, the true Samantha in action. Wow. And growing up in Galvindale. I think it has really taught me a lot. My mother was a single parent, but mm -hmm. we were raised with a house full with my granny, my aunts, my uncles, everything. All of us were raised in one house. And we never, I didn't grow up with my father, mm -hmm. but there was never that void. as okay. Because my, my family, my, my grandmother, my, my aunts, my uncles, cousins, nieces and nephews, they filled that void. So it okay. was never a thing of... I don't have a father, so I can't do this, that, and the other. Okay. I've achieved everything through the grace of God with the support of my family. Wow. I think that's amazing. So, so when you share that the, uh, that you did, uh, am I understanding you correctly that they, there was no relationship or there was just no gap for the relationship with your father? or There was no relationship. I knew where he was. I knew who he is. We live in, he also live in Galvindale, but there was never that the relationship because he was drinking like most of the time, he was an alcoholic okay. growing up. So there was never, but I had the relationship with my uncles and aunts from mm -hmm. his side and my cousins, oh, and, no. but there was just never that close relationship. But thanks to God, after the heart attack, I suffered in 2016. We actually have a relationship now. We can actually sit in one conversation without... Wow. We can actually have, and we can actually sit and have a conversation without being awkward or yeah. feeling having any resentment towards wow. him. So I honestly do thank God. For sure. That. Tell me, are you an only child, or do you have siblings? No, I do have siblings. I have a brother and a sister. My brother is the eldest. Okay. I'm the middle child, and then we have a baby sister. Wow, middle child. Yes. Did you do you ever experience what some kids would say they are the middle child syndrome, where you don't know whether you should fit towards the eldest or the baby? What is it? Do you have any... I don't think I ever experienced anything like that because my sister used to say 
as they call it in Afrikaans, it was fuss and fris. Okay. I used to be the, the, the fuss. <laughs> no, she used to be the fuss and I used to be the fris. So it's a mix of issues. So you would have more so favors at the house. Yes, yes. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about mom. So mom was an incredible woman. She taught me so much. Um, so what can I say? We grew up in AFM, in the AFM celebration service. Mm -hmm. She taught us how to pray. She taught us to be self-dependent, sure. to stand up for ourselves. Um, growing up, she taught us, she honestly taught us how to look out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. She always used to say, one day when you get married, I don't want your husband to say, I didn't sure. teach you anything. Sure. So everything and anything she could teach us, she actually did. And I promise you, she, my mother, when, when I grew up, my mother was a girl and she was a cook working in the, in the takeaway, wow. but we never lacked anything. We didn't go to bed hungry. We never had nothing. So she honestly provided in the best way she could in every sense of the way. Wow. And I do salute her for that every sure. single day of my life. Wow. Talk to me about your primary school. Where did you attend primary school? I actually attended primary school at George Mitt Primary. The, um, Okay. George Mitt Primary, they not ex it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. So I attended school at Galvin, um, sorry, George Mitt Primary School. And then I went on to attending high school at Galvin Hill High School. Okay. And after that, I went on several courses. Human Resource Management I did with PE College, Universal College. I did my um, Public Relations Certificate. Wow. So... I've done quite a few things. Wow. So what are you about now, as in career-wise? What do you do? Samantha right now is working for Colgate. Okay. Working for Colgate, we go around educating children on the importance of dental care, um, dental care and oral hygiene education. Wow, that's interesting. So we actually go around the whole Eastern Cape and we cover some of the Western Cape and we go to schools and we encourage children on the proper hygiene and how to brush wow. your teeth, all the health habits as well. That's what we're doing. Wow, right that's now. interesting. And, and I'm pretty sure you enjoy it because it looks I'm like you're a people's it. person. Eh? And not only that, children don't talk back. There are also a lot of questions though. Yeah. They give a lot of love, but there's not an awkward moment. There's never a time where you have to think now, hey, what am I going to do next? What should I say sure. next? And you just go with the flow and yeah. it's always a pleasure to be around wow. children. I always say sometimes we as adults, we can actually learn and go back into being children. Because when we used to be children, you never asked, would you play with me? You just started talking. Yes. You just that's started so engaging and that's children. And yeah, what would society be if we could all just go back into that? No skin color, no hair texture, nothing matters. It's just a relationship. You share in your profile about your your relationship and how you found Christ. Can you share a bit more on you shared it started at the age of fourteen? Can you remember what happened? Yes, I actually can. It was a very, very growing up in AFM, being part of everything. We went to church like seven days a week and it was never a hassle or a problem sure. or whatever. If we have to walk across the Stanford Road Bridge just to go to church, we went to sure. church. Wow. And we were there. We were there for every gathering. At the age of 14, actually 13, um, they now like I had the, we had to sit class and we had uh, the bath in, in church where they did all the mm. baptisms. So on the 14th, I can't remember the date specifically. Okay. On the 14th, it was a rainy day. It was very cold that day. But on the 14th, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I can assure you it was never the same. Sure. After that, I just had a hunger to serve God, to see God, to know God better. We used to pray when before we got baptized. Um, they, they, they led us to the sinner's prayer. We had to do mm -hmm. the sinner's prayer. And ever since that day, I might not remember much. I might not say a lot to God. But what I do know is that when I start praying, or mm -hmm. even before I pray, I say the sinner's prayer and do my Our Father. Sure. That's the most important. And I've been doing that since the age of 14. Yes, a lot of things happen since then. But as my uncle always say, I'll trek here, my man. Take my matrek. I'll never leave God because sure. God has been faithful. God has done so much, not only for myself, but for my family as well. Apart from the heart attack, I mean, I've lost my job, not lost my job, 
2013, I changed careers and mm. God was faithful. I got a promotion without having the certificates or the knowledge sure. to acquire that position. God blessed me with that position. Sure. So there's so much I can say about God and what he has done for me. And I honestly do thank him every single day of my sure. life. Tell us how, how, uh, tell us how do you, how do you, how do you feel when you relate the story of who God is to you? What does it do to you? What, what, how do you feel? Because I can hear the excitement in your voice when you, when you speak. So, so, so share with us what brought you to, or what is it about him? What is it about God? God is an awesome, amazing super wonderful heavenly father and no honestly when we pray no one compares to you you are our first and our, our, our beginning and our end our alpha our omega he's all of that in one and just to know god and to experience being in the prophetic experiencing everything that god has shown or done in the ministry that is such an incredible amazing feeling and god god is good Sure. As I told a other friend the other day, many a times when we go through trials and tribulations, you feel like screaming, you feel like shouting, and you don't want to pray anymore. Mm. But then that one song comes up, you know, just the name Jesus. That's all that matters. Sure. So sure. that's God to me. I know I might be babbling now and talking all this time. <laughs> no, <but> you're <laughs> not babbling, and I'm enjoying it. You're mentioning that being all in the prophetic touch on that are you graced and you you move the holy spirit move or god moves you with the unction of the prophetic yeah. and how did it start where did it start it started 20 2014 2014 i was invited to a church named scarlet threat ministries because okay. i wasn't part of any church at that time i was invited to scarlet threat ministries and a prophet um pastor sagren he's in um, durban now and Prophet Conrad, um, they prayed for us, and they told us to just allow the Spirit to lead us, you mm -hmm. know? Allow the Spirit to lead you and open your mouth and pray. At first, you're always scared, because what will people think, and yeah. nah, 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 you know, all of that. But we went to the front, and we started praying, and that's when we, I started praying in tongues, but I couldn't understand it, because yeah. I didn't, there was nobody inter interpreting anything, or yeah. I didn't have a scripture, I didn't mm. see a vision, or anything like that. But, I started praying, I went home feeling amazing because many people want to, they want to talk in tongues, yeah. you know, they want that be gifting, the spirit, yeah. they want to be filled with the spirit. I went home a few weeks later, we were invited to a friend of ours, to a friend's house, and he said again, I want you to honestly and earnestly pray, pray to God, sure. pray because I want God to activate your, your gifting, I was like, gifting? What gifting? I don't understand this gifting stuff. Mm. I grew up in the Bible ministry, but this yeah, has never yeah. happened to me. So we started praying, and as I was praying, closing my eyes, and I started speaking in tongues, and I could actually see the visions, and it was like, please don't stop me, you know? You know? Yes. Everything, I just yes. want to see more, I just want to know more, I just want to experience more. So that's how it happened, and since, since, since then, I've, I've been praying in tongues, I've been experiencing the Holy Spirit, I can see visions, I can interact with God, you know, sure. so, yes. That. Wow, wow, I'm, I'm very intrigued, but let, let's, let's try and contain everything because I can, I can <laughs> blow this portion out of proportion. Um, but allow me to ask you the following question, heart attack at 29? Heart attack at 29, yes. What happened? Heart attack at 29, on the 10th of November, I started experiencing chest pains. Okay. I was at work doing my reports as usual. I went home, didn't eat that night, just got bath, got into the got into bed. The following morning I woke up, yeah, but I was feeling this pain. I had the, the citrus soda, I had the panado, I had everything everybody suggested I should take. Mm. I took all of that. I went to work, but then I started feeling my arm become numb. But I did my reports because I worked at a training institution, so I ordered the lunches and all mm. of that. And I asked him if I can go to the clinic because the clinic was like a few doors from where I worked. I went to the clinic and they told me, there's nothing wrong with you. Your high blood pressure and everything is, is okay. I went back to work. 
when I went back to work, I went to the bathroom. When I got to the bathroom, I remember taking off all of my clothes in the bathroom. That's how hot I got. Shit. And the next minute, I was shivering. That's Shit. how cold it was. Eventually, two of the ladies working with me, they came out and they helped me. We went in the, we went in the office and they phoned my family members. They came and they got me and they took me to Mercantile Hospital. When I got to Mercantile Hospital, the doctor told me, there's actually nothing wrong. It's just acid reflexes. And I was like, but there's something wrong with my arm. I can't use my arm. And he's like, okay, we're going to keep you overnight just for observation. They took me for scans, for x-rays, and they couldn't see anything on either of that. Then they admitted me to the ward. When I got to the ward, I remember I was placed next to the bathroom, but I felt nauseous. So I came from my bed on my way to the bathroom, but when I came to the bathroom, I didn't feel the need to go anymore, so I turned back. And when I turned back, I fell face down on the bed. Wow. And I, didn't, and I remember people rushing me. But they were telling me, you need to speak to us, talk to us, um, what's your name, and asking me questions just to like have keep a conversation you, yeah. and keep me alive. I woke up, the next minute I woke up in the ICU in Mercantile Hospital. And I remember people asking me for phone numbers. And by the grace of God, I remember, I know all my family members' phone numbers, so I gave wow. them to them. And they, I gave them the phone numbers, and I passed out again. And then I woke up at, in the ambulance, then I vomited, and the next minute I woke up at Life St. George's Hospital in the, in the NICU. Got to the NICU, I remember they doing this, checking on this, on the screen, on the out, to see if there's anything with ultrasound, nothing. And they said, the doctor, the cardiologist, Dr. Potts said, they should take me to full CAT scan. I remember going down the passage and I passed out again. I woke up when I was in this tunnel and they said, you won't be able to communicate, but if you go on bridge, just lift your arm. I remember lifting my arm. When I woke up, I was on the operating table. That was the first time. I was on the operating table. I just saw white, people with white. And then I passed out. That was now the first time I passed out. It was for three minutes when they lost me. They lost me for three minutes on the operating table because then my artery was blocked. The second time, the second time still on the operating table, they lost me for eight minutes on the operating table. Then they, then they realized I had a heart attack. They did everything they had to. They pushed me back into the wards. My aunt and my sister, my cousin and my daughter, she was four years old. She was with us at the hospital. And I remember them pushing me in, but that's all I remember. The following morning I woke up. And the doctor, the cardiologist, was standing over my bed, just looking at me. And he's like, how are you feeling? How did you sleep? I was like, shock, sure, I slept like a baby. And he, asked, and he asked, how does it feel to actually pass away? And I was like, pass away me? No, and I started giggling. And all the nurses just came rushing to my bed. He called them, they rushed to my bed. Everybody stood there. And, and they all told me, you're not supposed to be alive this morning. Do you know we struggled sure. with you last night? And I was like, no, man, I was sleeping. Sure. I was sleeping. Nevertheless, I woke up the following morning. Friends and family came to visit me. The doctor kept on checking in every two minutes just to see if I'm okay. Because nobody in NICU actually gets out there alive. And, sure. and the condition I was in was that bad that nobody had hope that I would actually make it. Long story short, two or three days after that, I was discharged. I was at home for a week after that and went back to work. Okay. I went back to work, but I had to do blood tests continually because they couldn't figure out what happened to me. Mm. What caused this heart attack? Um, it went on December past, January. I gave people a lift in my car. Remember, we went we were in Stanford Road. We went in Stanford Road. And the, the heat of my car burst, and it actually um, burned myself on the inside of my thighs. Wow. I was again taken to hospital, not to hospital, to our um, GP. And I asked him, because ever since I had the heart attack, my tummy has been bloating. One day it's bloated, and the next it's normal. Mm. And I just asked him, um, can't you just have a look at this on the scan? We did the scans just to find out. When I experienced a heart attack, I was already a month pregnant. And they didn't realize that. And he, what? Was, like, he was like, Whoa, super whoa, shocked. whoa. Go back. Go back. 
So are you telling me when they did the ECGs, the scans, the extra, the extra is the ultrasounds? Whoa, 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 <laughs> This has no. got to be uh, no. You can't be serious. So when you experience a heart attack, yes. Oh, yes, wait, yes. wait. You were even in the tunnel. Yes. And they didn't pick up that there's a baby? Nothing. They did the scans, they did the x rays. Oh. Everything. And then? And then he gave me a letter and he said, um, Take this to your cardiologist. Take no, this man, to but wait, wait, wait. Are you not talking about months after? No, no. Not We're months talking after. about a week? Just uh, over a week? Two. No, no, no. I was pregnant when I experienced a heart attack. I was a month pregnant. But when I burned myself what? but when I burned myself in the car, I found out two months later I was already a month pregnant that time. So by the time I found out I was four months pregnant. I was four months pregnant. Lord, please <laughs> What are you doing to me today? You are you experienced a heart attack. Being a month pregnant. Not knowing you're pregnant. No, not knowing that. No signs. No signs, nothing. Okay, but there was a sign. Remember, you got off the bed feeling and nausea. Nausea, yes. But you didn't even relate it no. to pregnancy. You related to the fact that you're not feeling well. And I didn't eat the previous night and I didn't eat the morning, so it could be that. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, and then I need to close my mouth. So then, then you got the letter? So then I got the letter. You said, take this letter to your cardiologist at St. George's. So I went back to St. George's, asked to see Dr. Potts, gave him the letter, and I was like, it can't be. They took me for scans and x-rays and the whole 360 again. And he said, you're really pregnant. You have to go do this ultrasound thingy to see if everything's okay with the baby. So I went for this ultrasound just to find out there's nothing wrong with the baby. My father, you are awesome. Yeah. Oh, there is God. absolutely nothing wrong you are with my awesome. baby. <laughs> now I'm intrigued with what happened with the pass out three minutes, pass out five minutes, pass out eight minutes. How did God do that exactly. with you being exactly. passed out? Meaning, exactly. uh, according to them, yes, I was dead. you were dead. I was and dead. The baby? I was dead. My good God. I was dead. Samantha, are you telling me a story or are you telling me your I'm actually story? I'm telling you my actual truth. This is not something I read. This is not something I saw on the internet. This is what happened to Samantha. Faith van Heerlen. Okay, carry on because... <laughs> <laughs> then we went. I gave him the letter. He said, it can't be. He actually discovered, yes, I was pregnant. I am pregnant. Four months. We went for the sounds. There's nothing wrong with Ethan. My baby's name is Ethan Christian van Heerden. Oh, my heavens. There's nothing oh, wrong with Ethan. <laughs> Jesus has got to be here. <laughs> There's wow. nothing wrong with Ethan. So they monitored me throughout the pregnancy. I gave birth to a healthy, beautiful baby boy he was underweight but nothing no medical issues none whatsoever and yes he's still alive he's kicking his yard but other than that there is absolutely nothing wrong with my son and me for that matter because after after i gave birth i'm now permanently on aspirin 100 milligram aspirin but that's about it because i because they replace a stint okay in my okay. heart they replace okay. a stint so I'm on aspirin. Whoa, 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 whoa. So the, 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 the stint was done while you're pregnant? Yes. That was... Take me now. Yes, while I was pregnant. And under normal circumstances, they don't usually take risks like that. When, when, they, when they discovered during, during, the, during the time I was on the operation table, they discovered the artery was blocked so they had to remove it and put in a stint. That's... So now, now I've got a stint, and I'm on aspirin, but only on aspirin, no warfarin or any other heart, high blood pressure, cholesterol, no other tablets except for a aspirin. Just to keep the blood thin. Just to keep the blood thin. Yes, it's a blood thinner. I, I, um, <laughs> don't struck. Carry on. You gave, how was this, what did it do to you? What did this, 
what did this experience do to you? I understand completely why you now said in your biography that after that, your life has never been the same. It actually just shifted. It honestly did. After, after I gave birth to Ethan, I went back to ask, back to doctor, back to the doctor again, mm. and they did a test. And when they did the test, they told me that on the on the scans, mm. when they did the test, normally when you have a heart attack, seeing that you have layers at the bottom of your heart, mm -hmm. it normally has cracks cracks in to show that you actually experience a heart attack. Okay. But there's nothing. They can't see anything to prove that I actually suffered a heart attack. And the cardiologist actually asked me, are you sure you suffered a heart attack? So there's no signs except for me taking an aspirin that I suffered a heart attack in 2016. So that's God for us in a nutshell. That's what God can do. <laughs> <laughs> what has it done to you with your relationship? How has this affected your relationship with God? It's just on a total different level. I can't tell you. Many times I tell my friends that I've got this relationship. I don't call him God or Lord or Jesus. I normally say Daddy. And they all know when I speak, I speak about Daddy. Oh, my Daddy. father. Yeah, my you friends know? know. Then I tell them, I've got this relationship because I can, I can actually think something, to be honest with you. And then it happens. Or I'll just say out loud, you're going to say tomorrow it's going to rain. And honest to God, this it is really crazy. does. This it is really crazy. We, <laughs> we are so like, <laughs> apart from having the heart attack, pray God, oh Lord, you know, I don't like I don't hospitals. <laughs> Dad, you know, I do not like hospitals. So please just do not let that happen to me. But we are so like, <laughs> so you're actually making me laugh. And, and yeah, so whatever you think, it just makes it happen. It really does happen. And many times, as I told my friend the other day, yeah, sometimes I do get despondent. Yeah. I do feel, Lord, oh, really now, man, it's, it's been two days now. Sure. I've been asking you for two days, why can't you just come through? But what I've realized, and the morning when you actually messaged me, I realized that God is really an awesome and a good and a faithful God, you know? Because I was going through something because I'm waiting now for results on this because I've applied for a teaching position and not teaching position, of course. And I'm waiting for an answer on that. And that's been my prayer. Please, Lord, tomorrow, please, if they say yes, I've been approved and whatever. And when you sent me this message, I was like, I told my husband, D. Now in Afrikaans, I said, this is God. But I said in Afrikaans, D, as he ready. Yo, but what am I going to do? And I was like, so... I was afraid because how am I going to handle this? What am I going to say? Because then I thought it could be work related or whatever, but I don't want to speak about work anymore because I never shared what, I'm sh what I just shared with you now with yeah. anybody else. Sure. Many times in church when they say come up for testimony, you always say God is good yeah. and God did this, yeah. that and the other, but I never actually went into the depth of what, God has done for me. So so you have no recollection of the fact that you were dead? Nothing. Y to you, you were sleeping. I was sleeping. You had no outer body experience, nothing. nothing. Wow. I wonder, I want, have you ever considered asking him why has he kept that from you? Or is there a reason why that is still locked up mysteriously in him about you? What happened? Have you never thought about asking to, to see what encountered you? Ethan, do you know what the meaning of the name Ethan is? Okay, let me give it Please to you. The, the Hebrew <laughs> meaning of the name, I was, I was looking on my phone while you were talking. The Hebrew meaning of the name Ethan means strong and optimistic, solid and enduring, permanent, permanent. And the scripture that they give you that that they can actually give you reference is First Kings chapter four, Psalms eighty nine, and First Chronicles. Um, I, if I have to click on it now, but I don't know to actually be pregnant <laughs> and suffered it, yes, and suffered even death twice, and God. Wow, God is a faithful God. He is totally, he's like, 
is like the bomb. There is no one like him. Yeah, solid, enduring, permanent, optimistic. Does that suit his character? Yes, it does. It honestly does. Sure. Wow, Samantha, and then you, you, you. <laughs> the funny thing is, while you're sharing, um, I only met you once. I think I only met you face to face once. I think you came to greet me at an event Church, yes. that I was MC or yes. singing for. It yes. was a high tea. Yes. And the morning or the time when I asked you to come and be interviewed on show, your face came in my, in my prayer time. I was like, oh, I've got a lot of acquaintances. I know a lot of people. Exactly. But I asked, who do you want me to speak to next on Encounter Me? And your face, your hair was longer when I met yes. you. Your face came in front of me. And I was like, I don't know this woman. I met her. And he says, you're going to ask her to come. And I'm like, okay. When? Yeah. And he said, goosebumps. Yeah. Okay. The, the only, God's <laughs> timing is always accurate. And when I asked you and you immediately said it, I said, okay, that's easy, Father. And wow, I did not anticipate this at all. Actually, you are really, yeah, you are, you really need to tap deeper into what is happening in your life, you know, as in pertaining to that. And there's a lot of, especially in this era or time frame, for the past few months we've encountered, you know, the watchman on the wall, the, the praying woman that would fall ill a lot. Mm. The, the the church needs that encouragement, you know, because so. we tend to take the burden and because we travail before the presence of the Lord, it actually becomes a weight on us. Mm. Wow. 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 <laughs> and while you're saying that, Yolanda, this is now totally off the topic, but for the past, not when the epidemic started, Say six months after that, God has been really, you know, people who unbelievers normally say me clinky. Mm -hmm. But we, we know it's, we a, spirit know it's a spirit that yeah. leads us. And God has been telling us that, because where I stay, I stay in a, a, a complex. Mm -hmm. And this, there's a neighbor across just opposite me, and she's a Sangoma. And God has been saying, look at the Sangoma. She's continuously praying. Wow. What are you doing, you know? Many times you post things on your statuses. Sure. Put this on your status. And I know I've been disobedient because I haven't done it. And he's been saying continuously, start praying like this woman is praying. Wow. Then you will start seeing a change in the atmosphere. Wow. Then you'll start seeing change. Then you'll start experiencing change. Wow. But you're not doing that. You're praying for certain things. In neglecting everything else, start sure. really praying to God, and then you will see the sure. God of Jacob, He will answer. Sure. You know what's so profound that you were sharing that? Um, I was, I was, I was, I was really taken when, when lockdown before it came, um, in 20, 20, uh, 2019, the Lord has been speaking to me about um, purifying going into the furnace. And I didn't understand the prophetic unction at the time. And I knew that my, 20, my, 20, my year 2019 was not an easy year. Everything that could be shaken in my life was shaken. And I said, okay, I understand. And usually what the Father does, He would give me an utterance and then it would flow into the next year. So November each year is a significant time frame with me and the Father. Because then He starts, in fact, He starts speaking anytime sooner. So He would speak to me about 2022 as the year goes on. But then He said to me, there's a shift. Because look, I'm about to shake the earth one more time. And I didn't understand. But I put the scripture on my Facebook um, account and then lockdown came and he mm -hmm. says to me specifically I need you to 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 start take one of the walls in your house and make it a prayer wall and I was like prayer wall is this Why? even Why? public or, you know is it wise and what am I not going to be looking funny and we really started as a family to do devotion and then place these prayers on the wall and it was so in sync with what God has been doing in 2020 and then I I contracted COVID and I was like, it can't be because I, I didn't have any signs. I just had a headache. And a dear good friend of mine that's a doctor, she said to me, Yola, please just get to the hospital. Go check yourself. Get to the hospital. They're asking me, how are you feeling? I said, I'm fine. I just have a headache. Not a headache, headache. It was like someone that has pressure on my eyes, on my eyelids. That was all that I experienced for my whole period of lockdown. But the things that I experienced in God... 
And then on the seventh day, I had like an outer body experience where I was looking at myself worshiping. And he says, to, the father says to me, there is no way that we can come out of a, a scenario where it's a transformation encounter with him and then go back to what we know. So we can't come out okay. of a death and go back and not encounter what was happening in full circle in fruit in our lives. So then I said, okay, I hear you, but I do not completely understand. He says, the, the body of Christ is shifting at this precious time. And I, I find it very astounding that you would be in the prophetic. Now I'm sitting with the question as why would he allow you to experience a heart attack? And then when you go back medically, there is no proof of a heart attack. So, yo, God. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. And I don't like this clock that's in front of me because it's <laughs> it's three fifty three, which means our even our time is almost finished. But Samantha, what would you be saying to our audience today? If I can say one thing to our to the audience, I would honestly tell them there's a scripture that I quote and that I love by it's Proverbs three verse five. No six. way. No, may, may, may no. I say it out loud? May Please I say just say it, but I'm going to tell I, you why am I going no way. <laughs> it says, trust in the Lord with all, all your heart and never rely on what you oh, think you funny. know. Remember the Lord in everything you do and he will show you the right way. So, so, so anything and everything that you're going through, including myself, I've learned daily to just trust and accept what God is doing. Because it's His timing. His will shall prevail in and through our lives. You know why I went no way? <laughs> because you like the white... Let me just count. It was Crystal. It was... It was, it was Matthew. It was... You're like the fifth person that's on this slot of encounter me that would quote back... <laughs> quote back Proverbs 3 from verse 5. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You know, when I relocated to Port Elizabeth, um, someone, um, I, I'm up until today, I don't know her name. I just know that she was um, Pastor Eunice Liberty's sister. She came to me at a restoration in 2001. And she said to me, I need to give you the scripture and you need to live by this. And all will be well with you. And I literally took that as if someone's giving me a piece of bread. And it was Proverbs 3, verse 5 and sure, to 6. Awesome. And to me, that scripture has always been an anchor. Always been. Samantha. Oh, my good God. It's 5 to 4. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> somehow the Lord must just allow the clock to disappear for a while. But, but honestly, I, I thank the Lord God Almighty that he has orchestrated things the way he did today. And our listeners must might be listening in on, on this conversation about Encounter Me. And something that I'm taking and wrapping up today is, even though you came from one of the suburbs in our city that is known to be notorious, where they actually think no good can yes, come yes. from Helenville, mm -hmm. you come out of a house where there was a lot of people in one house. So today we want to encourage young people, especially young people that might be tired of the living conditions, we want to encourage you that where you are currently at, I just shared it with the boys at the graduation that I was part of, privileged to be part of, I shared it. You are never in the wrong place. Yes, true. There is nothing that takes God by surprise. You are in that place because that place has a specific purpose for your you. life at that specific time. And it might not be a lifelong condition or place or scenario or space that you find yourself in. Mm -hmm. So embrace where you are at, no matter where you are planted, and grow. Because soon you might find that you have outgrown that environment, but do not die in an environment. And I can pretty wrap up with your, with your testimony, um, Samantha, that your mother was working for a grow house. Yes. And usually people tend to think people that work in a takeout is living from hand to mouth, but the father, yeah, 
faithfulness has been proven to a single mom of three rearing kids and making sure that you had the best never go hungry and to top it all you had Jesus Christ that was the foundation yes. and then you go on and you share about your 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 salvation with with Jesus Christ at the tender age of 14 and then 15 years later he allows a cardiac arrest to actually astound doctors that he is still in control. So no matter what a doctor's report is, so God can actually yes. turn it around for yes. his good. So we we bless the Lord for today. I'm grateful. I'm completely, um, you have just given me another beautiful perspective. And um, my eyes fall on the scripture portion of Jeremiah 9, 17, where the Lord says to Jeremiah, and consider what I'm saying. In a time frame where, um, where Jeremiah was stationed, there was a, an increase of turmoil, an increase, an overwhelming of foreign worship, blasphemy, you know, corruption, wickedness. We, we, are, we find ourselves as the believers in that space. But the Lord tells the prophet, consider these things. Consider it. He says to the prophet, consider these things and call forth the wailing woman. Call for the wailing woman. Let them lay before me in prayer. And so astounding, you have just shared how the Father has been permeating in your spirit to pray even as foreign worshippers believe in their foreign gods. We as the church should continuously and persistently believe in him. Samantha van Yerden, there has been nothing insignificant about your interview today. There has actually been a divine time today. I appreciate the Lord for this opportunity and to our listeners out there and our faithful Facebook viewers oh, all our family of Agape Evan, thank you for tuning in again to a beautiful, beautiful afternoon with myself Yolanda Singh and today our guest who is Samantha Van Yerden on Encounter Me at Agape FM, the radio station where we bring the gospel nearer to you and all I can say over and over and over again, God is faithful. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May, his, may he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May he lift up his, count, his countenance over you and be gracious unto you. And may we see the goodness of God while we are in the land of the living. Yes. Once again, thank you from myself, Yolanda Singh, for tuning in. It's 4 p.m. on this beautiful, beautiful Friday in the beautiful city of Port Elizabeth, now known as Kabeha. And from me, Yolanda, and my guest, Samantha. Samantha. <laughs> She's saying goodbye to you all. Um, yeah, we would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are going out today with the song by Maverick City and Bree, known as Holy Ghost. This is beautiful.